Hello and welcome to another Sunday School lesson here at Kijichanyama Lutheran Church. My name is Teacher Grace and I invite you and your family to learn the Word of God today. Now before we start anything, we say a word of prayer, then we'll read the Word of God. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you because you love us. Thank you for your Holy Spirit who teaches us your Word. We ask you, Holy Spirit, to teach us today in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen and amen, guys. I hope you're excited. And today's lesson is the calling of the first disciples, okay? The calling of the first disciples, where our scripture passage uh, comes from Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And our memory verse that we'll read later on today is Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Our scripture passage is from uh, for, uh, Luke chapter 5, verse 1 to 11. And uh, our memory verse is from Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. 17. So I hope you have your Bibles with you. I hope you are ready for learning today. Please open your Bibles to the book of Luke chapter 5 verse 1 to 11. Open your Bibles and follow through. If you don't have your Bible close to you, you can follow through on your screen and the verses will be seen over there. So are you ready? I shall read through the help of the Holy Spirit. One day as Jesus was standing by the lake Gennesaret, with the people crowding around him and listening to the word of God, he saw at the water's edge two boats left there by fishermen who were washing their nets. He got into one of the boats, the one belonging to Simon, and asked him to put out a little from the shore. Then he sat down and taught the people from the boat. When he had finished speaking, he said to Simon, put out into the deep water and let down the nets for a catch. Simon answered, Master, we've worked hard all night, haven't caught anything, but because you say so, I will let down the nets. When they had done so, they caught such a large number of fish that their nets began to break so they signaled their partners in the other boat to come and help them. And they came and filled both boats so full that they, were, they began to sink. When Simon Peter saw this, he fell at Jesus' feet and said, Go away from me, Lord, I am a sinful man. For he and all his companions were astonished at the catch of the fish they had taken. And so were James and John, son of Zebedee, Simon's partners. Then Jesus said to Simon, don't be afraid. From now on, you will catch men. So, when, so, so they pulled the boats up in, on shore, left everything and followed him. Guys, today is an interesting story of a massive miracle. But before we go into that, I want us to do a little bit of a background of um, what happened last week, what we learned last week, what happened before, what we're learning today, and then go into today's lesson. So last week, we learned about Jesus sending out the 12 disciples. Jesus had 12 disciples, and he was ten sending them out into the world to help him preach teach the word of God, heal people who were not uh, feeling well or people who had evil spirits. And that was what Jesus was doing. Now, before he called the 12, he did that in step by step. He didn't start with a whole lot of 12. So he started with one person and then the other and then the other. So today we'll start with the first three individuals that were called by Jesus, okay? And the three first individual was Simon Peter, uh, James as well as John. James and John were brothers, yeah? James and John were brothers, but there's also another one who's Andrew. So uh, Simon Peter, Andrew, the brother of Simon Peter, and then we have John and we have James as well. So we'll talk about how that happened. But before that, I want us to remember a little bit what was happening at the time before Jesus um, started calling the 12 disciples. So um, Jesus grew, um, he was born 
from Mary. He grew up and then he um, was baptized. Do you remember when he was baptized? The Holy Spirit came on him. And when the Holy Spirit came on him, he got the power to start preaching the word of God. Before um, the Holy Spirit had come, he would be, you know, learning the word of God um, in the synagogue. He would be teaching people in the synagogue. But he didn't really start his ministry or his work of preaching and healing and all these things right so um jesus got baptized after he got baptized he started receiving the holy spirit and the power that the holy spirit gave him okay so after that he started he went into the desert he you know was tempted by the devil but because he had the power from the holy spirit so he was fine now when he came back yeah he started teaching the word of god preaching People who were sick were healed in numbers, in large numbers. After a little while, he got famous because everybody was getting so much healing, right? So he got so much famous and then um, people would just crowd wherever Jesus was. People would crowd around him. People would bring people who were sick, people who had demons. So Jesus would pray for them and they got better. One day, he went to the house of Simon's mother-in-law. Okay, and Simon's mother-in-law was sick. She had um, illness and she had a fever. And she, he prayed, Jesus prayed for Simon's mother-in-law and she was better and then she started helping them out. And when people heard this, more people went to Jesus for healing and prayers and listening to the word of God and the good news that Jesus was sharing with them. So all this was happening before that. Now today's lesson which is uh, super exciting, we'll see um, that Jesus is now seated at the, at the harbor, at the, at the shore, right? At the shore of Lake Gennesaret. Okay, it's a fancy name. Gennesaret. Okay, that's the, the lake. And he's teaching a huge crowd of people. As you know, all the time where Jesus was, there was a crowd where people who needed to hear the word of God because they hadn't heard the word of God before, okay? And also you'll notice that Jesus was teaching everywhere and anywhere. And that time, in the previous time, the only place where a person would hear the word of God was in the synagogue, right? But Jesus was out. Imagine um, the beach where Jesus is sitting at the shore and everybody is listening to him. Now, at that time, there are no speakers, there are no microphones. So just to make sure that Jesus is um, able, to, people were able to listen to Jesus properly, Jesus um, was asked um, Simon to go in his boat. Now, I want you to look at these pictures, and I want you to see this screen. So first of all, the first picture we'll see is um, a picture of the lake, of Galilee. So Jesus um, had moved from uh, Nazareth. He had he'd traveled. Jesus was always traveling. First, he was baptized at the River Jordan. Then he went to Nazareth. Then he went to Capernaum and the Sea of the Galilee. And then if you look at the next picture, we'll see that um, this is a picture of um, Simon Peter, as well as his partners, John and James, Simon Peter and Andrew, his little brother, they were fishing all night. As you can see, it's a, it's a dark night. So this is what we're learning today. So it starts with Simon Peter, as well as John and James, who are son of Zebedee and Andrew. They were on the, uh, in the sea the entire night because usually it's the best time to f to fish at night so they were there the whole whole night but unfortunately they did not catch anything and because of that they go back to the shore this is in the morning now so they're there they're cleaning their nets because you know there's nothing that they've caught they're not pleased at all they're not happy so you see there are four people there is um simon peter there is Andrew, there is James and John. James and John were the sons of Zebedee, okay? They're brothers, and Simon, Peter, and Andrew are also brothers, okay? I hope you guys remember your brothers at home and they're working together, just like you play with your brother or do the things together at home. 
Okay, so if in the next picture you see that Jesus now has asked Simon Peter, you know what, Simon Peter, can you push your boat um, to the sea a little bit so that I can speak to the people? And you can see from that picture that Jesus is on the boat, he's seated on the boat, and the people are on the dry land, on the seashore, or in the beach, if you will, these days, yeah? And he's teaching them the word of God, and he's preaching. And he did this so that the people were, would be able to listen to him and understand what he was saying, and but also hear him because there are lots and lots of people and lots of everybody wanted to see him. So imagine a huge crowd, everybody trying to see. All, all the short people would definitely not be able to see Jesus. And so Jesus decided, you know what, I'm going to sit on the, uh, on the lake and I will be speaking to the people so that everybody has a chance to see me, hear me, and get the message of God. Now, in the next picture, you'll see that um, after Jesus had finished, um, he's getting back to the shore. And Jesus is like, you know what, Simon Peter, go back. Go back into the sea and get a cat. And Simon Peter is like, you know what, Jesus, we've been doing this the whole time night and we're like really tired but because you've said so and you know before i used to ask myself hmm um why did peter trust jesus so much yeah why did he decide they've been doing it the whole night and mind you simon peter is a professional fisherman he knows this. He's been doing this every single day. He knows what he's talking about. He knows the right time to fish. He knows the bad times to fish. And definitely that early in the morning, that was not the right time to go fishing. So he's like, we've been doing this like the whole night. Yeah. So he's trying to, to make a decision. Should I use my brain or should I believe that Jesus is telling me this and I should do it in faith? So he's like, you know, I've been doing this this whole day. And the, mind you guys. The person who's telling them is a carpenter. Jesus professionally is a, profe is, a, is, a, is a carpenter. And he's telling a fisherman how to fish. So the fisherman is like, whoa, um, this um, carpenter is telling me this. But also, I know Simon Peter had remembered that his mother-in-law was healed by Jesus. And because of that now, he tried to use his brain a little bit, but he's like, nope, I'm going to go in faith. Because, and he said, because you say so. And he, this is the word he says, master. He noticed and he knows that Jesus is not an ordinary man. He's not an ordinary person. And he calls him master. We've worked hard all night and haven't caught anything. But because you say so, I will let down the nets. He acted in faith. He believed that if Jesus said that I should do this, I will do this because you have told me to do so. And so they decided to go out. So if you look on the screen, you'll see the picture that they, they decide to go. And then suddenly they're shocked to see that the catch is so much. Now, the, the catch was so much that the nets almost started to break. And then they started signaling to um, John and James. On the next photo, you'll see they're signaling, guys, come here. Come help us out. There's so much fish. And then they're like, oh, my goodness. They're all so amazed. They were astonished at how much fish they got. Now, they had brought two boats now, yeah? One boat that belonged to James and Andrew, um, James and John, the brothers, and another one that belonged to Simon Peter as well as um, Andrew. So they are all, you know, catching this fish and they're trying to pull. And you know how fish are when they are alive, right? They, they keep on beating around and they're trying to make sure that they're not losing anything. And so they're like, and e both. Both boats were so full that they almost started to sink. And then they are like so astonished, so, so astonished. And then they go back to the harbor now and at, to, at the shore in the next picture. They get back to the shore and Simon Peter knows that he is not talking to an ordinary person. He knows that he's not talking to just a, a carpenter or a person who's just preaching. He kneels down and he says, go away from me, Lord, 
for I am a sinful man. He realizes that Jesus is not just Jesus. Jesus is the Messiah. Jesus is the one who is coming to save them. And he understands that this is God. He is the one who is able to do this miracle because if um, it was Jesus who told them to do this, they would definitely not catch the fish. So he knew after realizing how good God is, he realized that he is a sinner. And that's the same way today. When we look at how God has blessed us, the way God has loved us, we realize that in ourself, we don't measure up. And that's a beautiful thing because God doesn't need us to be perfect. God didn't need Simon Peter to be perfect for him to start serving him. He just wanted him to be able to obey. And, and that is what Jesus was looking for. He knew that they've been working the whole night. He knew that. He knew that they were tired. He knew that they were disappointed. He knew that they were, you know, they had given up. Just like the way we do so many times. He knew that. But he wanted Simon Peter to obey him and to have faith. To have the faith enough to obey him even when it doesn't make sense. And that is what God wants you and I to do today. Even when it is difficult to obey God. And even sometimes it doesn't make sense when God tells you, you know, take that favorite toy that you like and give it to some other child who doesn't have anything. You might go like, am I hearing God correctly? Really? No, that can't be the truth. But maybe God wants you to be obedient so he can bless you so much more. Imagine um, Simon Peter go like, you know what, Jesus, we've been doing this like the whole day. Like, we're tired now. We're, we're, we're not going to do this. We're not going to do this. Do you think they would be seeing the miracle? No, they wouldn't. And that's the same way. God wants us to have faith and he wants us to obey him. And when we do that, then we are ready to be his disciples in the world and being able to teach other people and to help other people see that too. Because God is not looking for anybody perfect. I can tell you for a fact, Simon Peter, Andrew, um, John, uh, and James, all of them, they were not perfect. They were not perfect people. They were tired. They're disappointed. You never know what they were saying when they were um, upset. But Jesus took them, he took Peter especially because he had faith and he be obeyed even when it was not, it did not make sense. And that's what God wants us to do today. So he called immediately from there. If you look at the next picture, we find that um, Jesus tells him from today, you will not just fish for fish. Yeah, you'll not go looking and catching fish, but you will be a fisher of men to draw people and bring people to God. You know, being a fisher of men doesn't mean you go put people in the ocean and then, you know, put them in the net and everything. No, that does, that is not the meaning of that. But being a fisher of men means you go into the world where people don't know about Jesus and you tell them about Jesus and you tell them that he loves them the way they are and you tell them to obey God and have faith in him and they have a better relationship with God and that is all that we're called to do today. Even you are called today. You are supposed to be a fisher of man. I am supposed to be a fisher of man. And you go like, okay, I'm not a pastor. I'm not like a person, I'm not an evangelist. How am I supposed to do that? You don't need any fancy words. All you need to tell them is that Jesus loves them. Do you know how many people don't know that? People from other religions, you know, they may, they feel like, you know, Jesus is some distant, distant religion. You can simply tell them, you know what? Jesus loves you and he cares for you and is able to forgive you your sins and he's able to help you. And that is all that you need to tell them. And the beauty is that it is not you who will be speaking. It's the Holy Spirit who is going to be speaking in you. So he will give you the words. He just needs you to obey. Just like um, um, Simon Peter obeyed by going into the sea, even though he knew he was not going to catch any fish using the normal, he obeyed in faith. If you obey in faith and tell other people about Jesus, he will change their hearts and he will have a relationship. All God wants from you and I is to have faith, 
to obey and he will do the rest. And that is um, what we're supposed to do today. So if you look at the last picture, you'll see that Jesus is moving now. And, you know, Simon Peter, Andrew, um, James and um, John, they all saw this. They were all astonished. And when Jesus said, I will make you fisher of men, you know, now follow me. They left everything, guys. They left everything, even those many fish that they had caught. After they knew that a relationship of following God is so much better than all this fish. Guys, you know, that fish would have made them rich, you know, like really rich because there's a lot of fish and they would be able to sell that and they would have money. But they didn't think that was important. They, th they knew that a relationship with God is the most important thing. Much better than money, much better than the fish, much better than anything else. But loving God and learning and being with Christ is the most important thing. And I'm not saying that, you know, money is bad or things are bad. But the thing that should have more importance in our hearts is our relationship with God, which brings me to our memory verse today, which comes from the book of Romans. So let us open our Bibles to Romans. Romans, 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 chapter 10. Are we all there? Romans chapter 10 and verse 17. Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, and this is what it reads. Consequently, Faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. I'll read it again. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message, and the message is heard through the word of Christ. When we have faith, we don't just get faith just like this. We get faith when we read the word of God. And that is why learning the word of God is very important. And that is why Jesus was doing a lot of miracles, but he taught them the word of God too. Remember, at the beginning of the story today, he sat down um, by the sea on the boat to teach people. So it's, it's good to have miracles. It's good to sing. It's good to do all these things. But we grow in faith when we read the word of God. And that is how our faith grows. So imagine today, you didn't know about this story about the, the miracle of the fish, but now you know that sometimes God will tell you to do things that are difficult. Because you've learned that from the word of God, it's easy for you to have the faith to do that, right? So faith comes by the message and the message from hearing the word of Christ. And we hear the word of Christ in so many ways. We listen to it at church. We read it through the Bible. We listen to it on you know, YouTube like this in Sunday school online. There's so many ways we can learn and hear the word of God. I hope you have that thirst to learn the word of God. That is, that is the reason Peter, um, Andrew, and James and uh, John decided to follow Jesus because they wanted to learn the word of of God. So I'll ask you a question. If Jesus found you playing at school, yeah, and he told you, follow me, would you? In that, in today's life, Jesus is telling you, follow me. He's not, he doesn't mean that you need to leave your home, but he means that your heart needs to follow him and your heart needs to follow his word through reading it and following him, meaning doing what he would do. Okay, I hope you enjoyed this lesson today. And just to make sure that we've been together uh, through this entire time, I want us to go through the questions. And question number one is, so who told Simon Peter to let down the nets for a catch? Question number one. Guys, I hope you've given me a shout with this answer. And the answer is Jesus. Yes, absolutely. That was an easy one. So let's go to question number two and let's see. Why did Simon and his partners give up? So at the beginning, Simon Peter and his partners had given up. They were disappointed. Why do you think that was? Okay, if you're listening to me carefully, you would know that it is because they had spent the whole night trying to catch fish and they didn't find any. Zero. 
okay? So that's why they were disappointed. They're hu they were human beings, so they got a little bit disappointed, okay? Question number three. What happened after they laid down their nets? So this is the second time now. They laid down their nets. What happened? What happened was a miracle, nothing short of a miracle. They got so much fish that even one boat was not enough until they took a second boat. And even the second boat, it was almost not enough as well. So they all, both boats almost sank. And that was a miracle that God had given them. So the last question which is something that I want you to think about. It's not a question that you'll answer real quick. I want you to think about it. Now that you've learned that God desires or he wants us to have faith, to obey him, what are you going to do differently? Like based on everything that we've learned in this uh, lesson today, what are you going to be differently in your life? What is going to change? Because we learned the word of God so that we change our behavior and be more like Christ. Yeah. We're not like just learning the word of God. Like, okay, that's an interesting story. Bye bye. No, we learn it so that we change in character. So now that you've learned this, what are you going to do differently? Okay, I want you to answer that in your heart and I want you to change that into a prayer and say, God, I want to change this. Help me do this. So let us pray. Lord, we thank you so much because you love us. Thank you because you've given us this word. Thank you because you've given us an opportunity to trust you and see the miracles in our lives. Lord, we pray that you give us the power to obey you, to have faith in you, and also to spread your word because we too are your disciples today. In the name of Jesus, we've prayed and believed. Amen. Amen and amen, guys. I hope you enjoyed this week's lesson. I certainly did. And I hope most importantly, you're going to do something about it. You're going to share it with somebody else. You're going to start having faith and obeying God in obedience and uh, also sharing it with your friends. Thank you so much for joining this week. Looking forward to seeing you next time. My name is Teacher Grace. This has been a Sunday school session here at Kichinyama Lutheran Church. Bye-bye.